Meteorologist is Carlene Chavis, and well, we're talking about atmospheric rivers. You might be asking yourself, what is an atmospheric river? I'm here to help you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that graphic, because what is an atmospheric river? It's not the low pressure system, it's what the low pressure system taps into. So you get a strong enough area of low pressure that taps into an atmospheric river, which is a long band of water vapor in the atmosphere, often referred to as literally a river in the sky, because there's so much moisture that's associated with it. So you have the flow of that moisture that can be thousands of miles in length, hundreds of miles wide, but the big uh, problem with it is the fact that you have this massive swath of moisture that drops large amounts of rainfall in a short period of time. And that's where a lot of the flood concerns come in because in a lot of situations, it does not give the ground enough time to absorb that heavy rainfall before it does start to uh, move in. So you're talking about relentless rainfall with uh, atmospheric rivers continues to happen. And if you don't have enough time in between systems or even when a system is happening, when that moisture is coming down, the ground does not necessarily absorb it fast enough. So that's when we talk about flood concerns with atmospheric rivers. It travels across the Pacific Ocean, steered by prevailing winds moving from west to east, warm bands of tropical moisture. As mentioned, it's tapped into by an area of low pressure, sends it in our direction. Now, the odds of our rain chances, they go up when we have atmospheric river events because they have so much moisture associated with them. It's also heavier across the mountains as it lifts. If you could bring me back on cam real quick. And that's because if you think about a river that is flowing, just kind of going along, you put something right there in the middle of it. And for us, especially across Southern California, that's north to south facing mountains. That's going to change the flow. So as a result, you have that flowing water and then you start to have it lift a little bit more. That's why we have the higher rainfall totals that favor mountains with atmospheric rivers because of that barrier that it creates. And that could lead to a lot of uh, flood concerns, especially right there along coastal mountain slopes when we are talking about atmospheric river events. Let's go back to the graphic. And so it brings a lot of that moisture in. And when talking about the mountains, we have a tendency to see higher elevation snow. So not necessarily focusing more so on those snow levels that get down to about 2,500 feet because you need a cold, strong area of low pressure for that to happen. Well, this is what the low pressure system taps into. And as a result, you're talking about warmer moisture. And that's why we have a tendency to see those higher elevation totals or high snow elevation when you're talking about it being that snow level around 10,000 feet. So coming down to maybe about seven to 8,000 feet is what we have a tendency to see more so with atmospheric rivers unless we get a strong enough low pressure system that moves over us after the atmospheric river that really helps to bring that snow level down. But the big hazard is always the heavy rain Rainfall. And so that leads to concerns of flooding, mudslides and debris flows, especially when it comes to burn scar areas, areas that have been uh, scorched. The ground has been scorched because of uh, fires that have broken out, brush fires, wildfires. It does not have enough time to absorb that moisture. And so that's when it can cause damage to property and people. And so we focus more so on the flood concerns when it does come to atmospheric rivers. As mentioned, it's so much moisture in a short period of time. Now, the term atmospheric river, a good example, a lot of people know this one, is Pineapple Express. It's a more well-known example and term for an atmospheric river. The difference is with Pineapple Express, it has a tendency to be a little bit more narrow. It's a strong atmospheric river and develops in the tropical Pacific. Now, atmospheric river is a newer term that was coined in the late 1990s. And also talking about atmospheric rivers, it's a little bit different too because it has a scale system very similar to what we would see for a hurricane. So with atmospheric rivers, they have a, a scale that goes all the way from one to five. So an A AR1, AR3, AR5. You're seeing that basically numerical order right there. So our AR1 is a weak atmospheric river. It brings in beneficial rainfall. And of course, when we're talking about Southern California, we always say we could, we could use the rain, we need the rain, especially with drought conditions. So a weak atmospheric river, definitely looking to be beneficial. You have moderate one that's mostly beneficial, but some of those hazards start to pop up, especially with flood concerns. But once you get into the territory of an AR1, AR3 to an AR5, that's when the hazards really start to come in. It's just so strong and so much water all at once that it becomes a hazard when it comes to your property, to your life as well. That's when we have a tendency to get these stronger ones that make their way across the state. A lot of ARs, especially when they're fives, don't necessarily 
hold that strength as it makes its way across the state when it gets to Southern California because we are the southernmost portion of our region. So a lot of times something that could start off as a AR3, a strong or strong atmospheric river could actually go to be about an AR1 once it gets closer towards us, just depends on how rapidly it would weaken. So I hope this helps you as we go into our rainy season talking about atmospheric rivers and hey, maybe educate your friends as well.